This is QD Clinic and I'm Jack Cush with Room Now. QD Clinic's brought to you by Room Now Live 2021. More on that later. Today, we're gonna to talk about sore throat and fever. In fact, it's a case of FAPA, P-F-A-P-A, -A -A, also known as Marshall Syndrome. So, 27-year-old guy comes to me with a diagnosis. You know, the diagnosis already made by Dan Kastner at the NIH, probably about 10 years ago, five years ago, something like that, when he presented with um, aphthous ulcers, fevers that would last three to five days, and then recur roughly every 28 days. He had uh, cervical adenopathy. Um, he had some axillary adenopathy. He had some abdominal pain. He had some diarrhea and, uh, and aching and whatnot, but really didn't have joint problems. No joint pain, no, no joint swelling, although he does get aching. So this is an interesting case because uh, he was seen twice at the NIH and then sent back to his doctors in Nowhere, Texas, where they gave him, at the instructions of the NIH, uh, Anakinra. But it turns out that he didn't tolerate Anakinra, had an allergic reaction. Sounds like he had really severe injection site reactions, which, by the way, if you've never used Anakinra, I've used a ton of it over the years, not only in auto-inflammatory diseases, Stills disease, but also in RA where we did the studies in it. Um, injection site reactions are not uncommon, maybe half the patients. The thing about it is that sometimes it happens in every, with every injection, you know, again, half the patients, they get an, an injection site reaction with a, what looks like a welt, but it's not painful, it's really not itchy, it's just sort of a bother, and then it fades over two weeks and desquamates and goes away. But you'll get them every day for up to 28 days, and then after a month, they just stop. So it's almost like you have to take the drug long enough to get the effect to make the ISRs, the injection site reactions, stop. Interesting. Anyway, he couldn't tolerate it. He probably had severe ISRs. And, and then his doctor gave him, of all things, infliximab. And, uh, and he's done reasonably well since, not had any fevers, still has some GI complaints. So why is this FAPA? FAPA is, actually stands for the features of the disease. P um, is the um, periodic fevers. Um, second is F for fever. Third would be aphthous ulcerations. P would be pharyngitis. And A would be adenopathy. So those are the key features of FAPA. I'm getting the first one wrong. Let me, let me look at my notes here. Um, so, hold on, I'm not sure why. Yes, yeah, periodic fever, P and F, APA. -A. Um, the interesting thing about this periodic syndrome is it starts in kids in the vast majority of cases. Maybe up to 20, 30% can actually have a persistence into adulthood or maybe even an adolescent onset like this young man. The fever generally lasts three days and then recurs really every four to six weeks. In this gentleman, he said usually three, sometimes five, and temperatures of above, above 102. And when he'd have the fevers, his labs would be crazy looking, high sed rate, high CRP, and he would have um, uh, oral ulcers and cervical adenitis, kind of since the diagnosis. There is not a genetic diagnosis, unlike many of the other auto-inflammatory syndromes, which are monogenic, um, there's no known gene association. Some recent evidence suggests that there may be an association with IL-12 P70, which binds to IL-12, and that's interesting when it comes to treatment options. How are these patients treated? They generally are treated with steroids when they're having attacks or just for the time that they're having attacks. In some, tonsillectomy works. In some, cimetidine. But generally, biologics are not needed, and certainly, fliximab has never been studied. Now, it is largely a pediatric disorder, but it can occur in adults. And you might look at a tweet that I put out um, two weeks ago from Susan Chinoy about FAPA, where she told us about Cantini's criteria for adult FAPA syndrome. And for that, they had to have fever, uh, pharyngitis, cervical adenopathy, abnormal inflammatory labs, and then intervening disease-free intervals to qualify. And again, this kind of the same experience has been seen in kids as far as what works. Uh, in many cases, it's self-limiting. It's not usually a lifelong febrile disorder. The interesting thing about this person is, one, he needs high doses of infliximab, which makes me worry about what the diagnosis is. So I ordered a gene panel on him from Invitae.com. Talked about that in last week's uh, QD clinics. Um, and we'll see if he has another disorder that's looking like 
Marshall syndrome or FAPA syndrome, but in fact there's another, um, another variant that could be found genetically. And there are several of them that have IBD as, as key features, because maybe that's why the infliximab is working in this man. He did have alpha ulcers, um, and uh, I don't know of what his colonoscopy results, so that'll be interesting to see. The interesting thing that Dr. Shinoy brought up was this recent re uh, association with IL-12P70, which you know could become a target. It turns out that a primalast is a reasonable inhibitor of IL-12P70, so maybe that might be a future treatment option for a patient like this. So uh, I think you should um, look for cases like this. Again, the distinguishing fevers is the periodicity that comes back every four weeks, every five weeks like clockwork, and that they have the associated aphthous ulcers and cervical adenopathy. They can have adenopathy in other places, but generally this is what's dominant. That's kind of where the diagnosis, and it is a clinical diagnosis, that is, that is improved by, as I said, steroids. Rarely do they try IL-1 in these people, but uh, I'm not even sure why it was even tried in this man. So that's it for this QD clinic. Again, I want you to consider our Room Now Live. If you're a fellow, uh, a rheumatology fellow, it's free registration for you. Just go and register and you can either come to the meeting right now. I think we have 50 people coming to Fort Worth and plus our faculty, uh, about half our faculty are coming to Fort Worth. And, uh, and then we have hundreds who are going to sign up online. So you can uh, register for free and attend the meeting if you're a fellow. See you at Room Now Live.